In this video, you will be learning how to properly install the invisible beaded weft. So starting off, before creating your rows, you wanna identify the thickness of your client's natural hair, whether it's thin, medium, or thick. Knowing that it's thin, it just means that you'll have less rows created and you'll start a little higher um, above the nape area. Knowing that it's typically medium to thick thickness, you will start lower in the nape area and work your way upwards and you have created more rows. Ensuring that when you're sectioning on your scalp, your client's scalp for the beaded weft, you are going in a U-shaped form. So we're going to do our same T-shape to start. This will just make it easier for us. Clipping that off to the side. Again, just making sure it's as neat as possible. Just a friendly reminder that mannequins are difficult to section on. So our client here has, I would say, thin to medium hair texture. So we're going to start a little higher just so that when she ties her hair up, it's not visible. So starting by the ear, you're going to go downwards to create that U shape. And this just allows us to ensure that there's full coverage on the sides as well. And that's what will help us when we do that U shape rather than just placing it straight. And just put a little bit more. bit more. Perfect. And then we're going to clip this off. Just making sure your entire process is neat to avoid any complications. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, following where we sectioned off to create a seamless and connected row. going to clip that off and now you have your first row so as you can see it's not necessarily straight it kind of has that curvature using your alligator clips you're just going to pin that off to the side or to hold all those hairs that are falling your next step is to grab your weft. Um, just know I am using a lighter weft so you guys can see my stitching and everything is a little more clear. So typically your weft will come like this. It comes like very long. I use the machine weft because it is a bit more thicker and more secure. And typically what I'll do is I'll measure um, where this is gonna go and then I'll do some trimming. So it comes pretty long, so you'll probably end up using both of these and I'll show you guys in a second. So what I'll do is grab the corner piece and I will measure, making sure that I'm leaving a two finger space between where the client's perimeter of their face is versus to where I want the weft to begin. So let's say I am starting it over here. I am measuring it on the same side, again, leaving those two finger spaces. So approximately that much. So I'm going to trim my weft on this side using some scissors and trimming the weft. So now that I've trimmed my weft, and measured it and it looks about right. We're going to measure a second one. So you're gonna use that extra piece and you're going to measure the second one to be exactly the same length. So then you'll have two wefts. At this point, you should have two wefts 
to match. And we will be layering these together and I'll show you your next steps. So the next thing you're gonna start, which would technically be the first thing that you're gonna start, is the base of where the weft is going to be stitched through. So you're going to start beading very similar to the way that you apply your nano rings. You're gonna start beading using micro beads, which are a little bigger, and you're gonna start beading an entire row. So grabbing your micro links, these are typically 5.5 millimeters in uh, width and length. So grabbing your loop thread again, using your micro links, you're just going to link a few onto your loop. So once you've looped your micro rings, you're gonna start again from the side, working your way to the other side, leaving that two finger space. So typically you're gonna do the exact same uh, upside down triangular shape that you would do with the nano rings, except you're grabbing more hair and you're putting more hair in between the beads because these beads are a lot thicker and more hair can fit in between them and you need that extra support. So you're going to do that triangular, upside down triangle, but using a bigger amount of hair making sure that there's no crosshairs in the way and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to loop the hair through the thread, pull that micro ring upwards and onto the hair and bring that a little higher than you would with the nano ring. You will go as close to the root as possible without causing any tension. Then you're going to grab your pliers and you're going to tightly secure. Just keep in mind when you are securing the micro ring, you wanna secure downwards, not upwards. If you're securing it upwards, then it's gonna stick out and you don't want that. You want them to be as invisible as possible. So you're going to make sure that you're clamping them downwards like so and then you're going to continue that for the rest of the row creating that like upside down triangular form and grabbing a bit more hair Looping your micro ring onto the hair, pushing it upwards, making sure no crosshairs are in the way and fastening it with your pliers pointing downwards, like so, and continuing that on. Now, if you find that it wasn't tight enough, all you have to do is pinch the sides. These are quite reusable, a little more than the nano rings, and then just bring it up. So once you finish applying your micro rings to your row, the first thing you're going to do is one by one, lift them upwards. So you're going to grab all of them and lift up. If you wanna grab an extra clip just to hold that up. And just Hold that up in place, making sure all those other hairs are down. So as you can see, I've just clipped all the rings upwards. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab one piece of your weft that we measured and you're going to hold that 
just underneath because if there's extra weft here and it's not close enough to where your last bead is you will have to trim that off so we are going to trim a bit more here but you want to make sure that it's perfectly lined up so we will have to bit it, trim a bit more on the edges here so once you've made sure that it's all matched up with your micro beads going to make sure that way when you're threading through it lays flat and there's no extra weft sticking out so that should be good so you're going to hold this in place grabbing your alligator clip so you're just going to clip that with the natural hair so this will allow it to hold it in place so typically i'll use two just to keep the other side up a little bit as well so just hold that upwards and clip and this will just hold the weft in place for you the next thing you're going to do is bring those beads down and over And then you're going to grab your second piece of weft and this is going to go on top and this is what creates that invisible method where the beads are hidden there are many ways to creating a weft and doing it some people just do the one on top and then start sewing and don't do this one underneath some people do the double sandwich this just allows for more hair more coverage and that invisible method so then you're going to do the same thing here. We will have to trim this one up a little bit. So once you've trimmed that and it lines with this one, you're going to then clip this one as well. So you're going to, this part gets a little tricky, but you're going to let go of one and now you're going to clip on the natural hair and the two wefts so it holds it in place. Same thing on the other side. Let go, clip on now both of the wefts. So now you have both of the wefts held up in place, just like so. And now it's ready to start the sewing process. So this is going to be your sew-in process. You're gonna grab your thread and you're going to stretch out both your left and right arm and that's how long your thread is going to be. So it's gonna be as long as your arms, both of them fully opened. And then you're going to fold it. So once you get reach that, you're just gonna fold it and you're gonna trim this part. So once you've trimmed it, you're now going to add your needle onto the thread or your thread onto the needle. So once you've got your needle onto your thread, you're just gonna tie off the two ends and you're going to do just a double knot. So once you've created your double knot, you're just going to trim off these end pieces. So now that you have your needle and thread, you are ready to stitch. So just making sure that that knot is on the end. So just bringing that downward and you're gonna start from left to right or right to left, whichever way works for you. So the very first thing you're gonna start with, especially on your end pieces, are your anchor stitch. And this is basically what holds majority of the weft together. So you're going to start by looping your needle through the client's hair making sure that you're going through the weft underneath. If you're not going through this weft, then it's not gonna be secure and the weft behind is gonna fall. So you're gonna go through the client's hair that's looped through the bead, and then you're gonna go through the weft underneath, and then up through the weft over top. And you're gonna go, you're gonna open your thread and you're gonna go through the thread that's opened and you're going to pull, making sure you're always holding on to this thread so that it doesn't get tangled. And you're going to pull, just like so. Just making sure it's not tangled up. 
and then pull, pull, pull all the way and hold that in place. So we'll do that again. Through the client's natural hair that's already looped in the beads, so just over top here, making sure that you're going behind the weft underneath and through the weft over top, opening this thread here and going through the thread, just like so, through the thread. So the thread is open, you're going through it, and then just pulling and let the thread take its course. And keep going, making sure that it's tight. We're gonna do this one more time, a little closer to the edge here to secure this, and making sure that it sticks flat to the client's head. So one more time through, a little closer to the end here. So going through the client's natural hair, through both wefts, and then through your thread. Like so. Making sure that these hairs are not playing over top. And then pulling that through securing it tightly like so. So this is considered your anchor stitch and this is what holds the sides and the sides are super important. Then you're going to make your way across and you're gonna go to your next bead. Doing the exact same thing, you're gonna go through the client's hair, making sure that you're going through that weft underneath. If you're not going through the weft, then it's not going to be secure. And this time, you do not have to put the, the needle through the um, thread. You just have to pull. Just like so. You're, pulling, you're putting your needle through the actual thread. You're not put, putting it through the actual thread. You're pulling it through just the um, sectioning. And that will create that stitch and this is called a blanket stitch so you're going to do that again through the same bead and same hair and you're going to go behind and then through just like so pulling and making sure that that is over top and making sure that it's tight you're having those hairs fall, make sure you are clipping them back. And then you're moving on to your next piece. Through the hair that's through the bead, behind the weft underneath, and through the weft over top. And pulling that out, making sure, again, you're always holding this to help you. And tightening that one more time through that bead through the thread but not having the thread separated and then pressing that out just like so and continuing on to your next bead through that hair through the weft behind and then through the thread here. Holding on to your thread and it creates that blanket stitch. Don't worry if the weft is kind of falling downward. Um, when you tighten up your stitch, it is going to hold it in place and bring it a little higher. So one more time through there. Making sure that the hair is just kind of out of your way. Sometimes the hair will come in the way, but it's okay. If you want to just pull it out, you can do so. Like so. I'm just going to fix my weft here. And then move along to your next bead. Pulling that through both wefts, front and back, through your thread. 
And the only reason why I'm doing this in a colored thread, um, well, I guess it kind of matches her color, but just so you guys can see it on the weft. Okay, and just be very careful when you're using the needle. You obviously don't want to pinch the client's scalp, so be careful. Now we're going to turn this and keep going through the bead, through both wefts, come out and over, and pull that needle out, holding the thread. And do it one more time through the hair through the weft, pulling that needle out, creating your stitch. If you need to adjust your weft sometimes, you may do so. Just pull that one up after. Moving on to your next, through the hair, through the weft, through the thread, pulling and tightly fastening that through the weft, through the bead, and securing. Then you're going to get to your ends again. So you wanna make sure that everything is tightly secured. So your last piece is going to be another anchor stitch and it's going to be similar to the one we did in the beginning. So you're just going to loop your needle through the hair behind the weft, bring that out and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to open up the thread instead of just normally looping it through, you're going to open up the thread, pull your needle through the opened thread and this will tightly secure and fasten your weft. Like so. And then you're going to do that one more time through. And at this point, you can just take your clips out through the thread, tighten that out. If you wanna do one more time, just for more security and just kind of close off this edge here, you can do so through, open your thread, through the thread. So once you've stitched up your entire head, you want to make sure that these end pieces aren't sticking out too much. So if you need to create another um, stitch, please do so on those end pieces to ensure that they are not sticking out too much. And then what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to trim this off over here and you're gonna tie a knot. After you have cut that off, tied your knot, you now are done your first row. And typically this is what it will look like. So if you bring the weft upwards, as you can see, it's created that invisible, almost like a hairline effect. And once you have your stitching and your thread matching the color of the client's hair and the extension and it all is just like color, color blended, then it'll all look a lot more seamless. And then when you go to tie it up, it will be hidden and covered. Next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to remove and reinstall. So for reinstallation with the invisible beaded method, you can't just pinch the bead and slide it up. So typically the client will come to you and the extensions are all moved down. Um, you will have to remove it all and put it back in. 
So if you weren't doing the second weft layer, so you were just doing the full row of beads and then putting one weft on top and stitching it, you can just lift the weft upwards, pull those beads down and open them and push them back to the top and then tighten them with your pliers. And then that will literally relift the entire thing very quickly. But because we did the invisible method, you do have to remove them first because if we lift this weft up, the beads cannot fall through. So you do have to remove the entire installation and then reinstall. So typically being very, very careful, you're just going to cut your stitch out and gently start removing it. You may need to cut a few times. Just going to remove stitching. And then you can start to kind of see it come off. Obviously, you're going to want to use scissors and be very gentle with this stuff because you don't want to cut the client's hair or cut the weft. So you'll start to see the weft kind of come out. And you're going to pull your weft out. Pull your second weft out. Obviously being as gentle as possible. Just going to brush that out, making sure all of your thread is out. really ensuring that thread is out. And once you've done so, all you need to do, so typically your client, let's say for example, is coming to you and the beads are now down to here. All you will have to do is pinch the beads and bring them up. So you're just going to open the bead the way you would remove a nano ring. So just open the two sides, pinch the sides and bring the bead upwards and tighten it back to the root. If the client has matting and tangle, you will have to remove all of these beads, brush those tangles out and then put them back in and start all over. But if their hair looks like it's been properly maintained, all you have to do is pinch that bead and bring it back up. So pinch it open, bring it back up and then fasten. Or if it's matted, pinch the sides and remove and then reinstall using a new bead. And that is how you properly install, remove and reinstall your invisible beaded hair extensions.